There's nothing more treasured or vital to Florida than our waterways. It's why so many people visit Florida. It's why so many of us live right here. Tonight, we continue a weekly series telling you, though, about the invasive species in our state, and Megan McRoberts reports on what's become a threat to vital oyster beds and a nuisance for boaters. Just steps off the city of Sebastian's shoreline. A working waterfront keeps the town's rich fishing history alive. Another day in the river. Crews spend hours on the water, shucking away. We are sorting oysters. To serve up the only locally grown oysters you'll find on the Treasure Coast. Depends on the size. Nicolette Mariano runs the show out here, starting Treasure Coast shellfish during the pandemic. It has been a complete roller coaster. <laughs> this is what a day on the job can look like for her. This is a pod. Okay. Keeping her seed oysters under careful watch, tracking the time they're in and out of the water. She's monitoring temperatures and water conditions while working around fears of algae blooms or hurricanes. And if those challenges aren't enough, there's this. There's a big mussel. And that's a green mussel? Green lip mussel, yeah. You can see right there the bissel thread oh, that's yeah. attached itself. Asian green mussels. That's a pretty decent sized mussel right there. You said the where bag. there's one, there's others. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think you guys saw they found a couple little ones too today with what we're going through. So mm -hmm. obviously reproducing already this year. The green mussels originally from the Indian and Pacific Oceans compete with her oysters for food, threatening their survival and taking away food for crabs and other fish. So this isn't just about Nicolette's bottom line, but this entire ecosystem. Like right now, even if you look on the dock pilings, you don't really see a lot of oysters. That's a native species. That's a keystone species to Florida's ecosystems and the Indian River Lagoon. So even, you know, just taking those green mussels out, yeah, even if it's just one or two of them that we find, you know, it's it's making a little bit of an impact. Each oyster saved can filter 50 gallons of water per day. Are you pretty passionate about trying to help get rid of invasives? Yes. Yeah. So she keeps an eye out for green mussels throughout her seven acre farm. We were seeing a lot at some point last year. But other parts of the state see it much worse, like in Tampa Bay, where the green mussels were first found in the state back in 1999. Likely released into the water by accident from large cargo ships. They're known to damage the bottom of boats, even clogged power plant intakes. They have the potential to wreak havoc out here for you. Yes. So she disposes of the green mussels she does find, giving her oysters the best shot to make it to harvest and help this estuary thrive to keep this waterfront working. Got to take care of your environment so I can take care of you. Megan McRoberts, WPTV, News Channel 5. A lot of the pressure to help stop the spread of the green mussels is on boaters just by making sure you're checking the bottom of your boat, making sure they're not stuck to it, and disposing of them if you find them, especially if you're taking your boat to a new place, a new body of water. Make sure you first drain your bilge at a proper disposal station.